All right, we're back again with another random visit. And this one is definitely random and definitely brand new. We've been meeting a handful of people doing this. And a lot of people seem pretty cool to do this. And then there's been two that haven't been. And I share that with you because, well, I know at some point we're going to run across more people who aren't cool with doing this. And you never know every time that we attempt this, if they're gonna be cool or not. Regardless, it's a good thing to be able to do to try to help these folks out, maybe get some pen pal support, put $20 on their books. And even though that's not a whole hell of a lot, I mean, it beats what they had prior, which was, well, at least not that $20. So we got a minute until this next random visit. I ran across this person. They're actually locked up in the same place that Corso's currently locked up at. I've actually got two visits scheduled today for this same exact facility and no telling how this is about to go. Also to note, trying to do better with my intro, get right to the point. No using the word nefarious. Yeah, let's just try to get right to the point and hope for the best. Got no idea what this guy's locked up for, but we might be getting ready to find out. And like I had mentioned in a previous one, I wonder if this guy's waiting on this visit like we're waiting on this. You know, a lot of these folks will reach out to me after accepting the visit and ask, who is this? This guy did not do that. Maybe he already knows. Or maybe he just doesn't care. He's just happy to get a visit. You may start your visit now. <clears throat> my name's Joe. Hey, how you doing? My name's Joe. I'm from After Prison. I've got a channel on YouTube. It's called After Prison Show. I got to be honest with you, the nerves, they're, they're bad. And what I've learned helps with that is just getting right into it. Eric is this guy's name. Let's see if we can get Eric on the line. Yes. Hello, uh, Eric. Yeah, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? My name's Joe. Uh, don't know you, but was wondering if uh, I could just have a visit with you and talk with you. I've got a YouTube channel. It's called After Prison Show. I like to visit people just out of the blue, talk with them about their time, and if interested, I send you $20 and maybe try to help you get some pen pal support as well. Sure, hold on. Let me get to the uh, kiosk station so I can see you face-to-face -face real quick. Hold Fantastic. On. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I can't complain, man. That's interesting. Uh, you sound very optimistic. Uh, in the situation that you're in, and that's not to make light of your situation at all. Right. Uh, all right. So the camera's right here where I'm looking at you, but you may see me looking here because that's where my computer screen's at. Right. Uh, also to note, uh, what I like to do is I like to be able to record these, turn these into a video on YouTube. I call it visiting random strangers. I've been doing this for a little while now. Again, okay. this is this is not to make fun of anybody or to make light. Uh, I've I've served time myself. I did seven years. I'm from the state of Virginia as well. So I know I know what it's like to be in there and whether you have support or not, uh, just getting the opportunity to have any additional support could always be a good thing. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, I am married. Um, I do have support from my wife. She's been supporting me the whole entire time, you know, other than my mom and my pastor from my home church and everything. So um, having additional support is a bonus, actually. So. Absolutely. And, and I'm very glad to hear that you have support. Many people that I talk with, they don't. So what? I know what it's like to be on both sides of the fence, having the support while locked up and also not having it as well. Right. So obviously, I don't know anything about you. You don't know anything about me. It's my hope that we get to know each other through doing this a little bit. But how long have you been incarcerated? Um, I've been incarcerated now, going on 11 months. Um, I have approximately like four and a half to go, um, four and a half more months to go. Oh, wow. Um, I thought you were talking about four and a half more years. So No, no, no. <laughs> no. Um, I'm, I'm born and raised from Richmond. I live in Hawaii County. Um, I work at UPS as a lead supervisor. Um, I'm a musician. I play drums, bass, and keys for two churches in the Richmond, Hawaii area. Man, sounds like you're a very talented guy. Sounds like you yeah. have you have a lot of things going for yourself. If you don't mm -hmm. mind me asking, and you don't have to be specific, you could even be vague. You know what what ends you up uh, incarcerated? Um, I it was a 
receiving money under false pretenses, which is a low class six felony that unfortunately in Hanover County, they gave me my high on my gallows, which is 19 months. Um, even other judges and officers here at the facility was like, wow, you got that much time for a petty crime like that. Knowing that I should receive at least seven months to the mid range, which is 13 months. So, you know, at the end of the day, I look at this as a blessing in disguise. For one, I stay busy. Like I bowl in multiple leagues throughout the Richmond area, you know, and I met certain people here since I've been here. It's just like different lifestyles and wanted to find jobs. And I actually helped them get jobs since I've been here. So it's, yeah. That's pretty impressive to hear. Um I ask you this, uh, you mentioned the charge that you were locked up for. Did you have a criminal record prior? Um, approximately 10 years ago, and I've been out of trouble, you know, since I came home in 2014. I, I did a uh, little under three years um, for writing bad checks and, you know, a probation violation, stuff like that, too. And granted, unfortunately, the Commonwealth attorney out here made it seem like I'm the most dangerous person in the world. I'm like, really? I'm harmless. I stay out the way. I'm a family man. I got two kids. I'm heavily involved in the community, as you can see. You know, it's just, it boggled my mind. It boggled my daughter's mind. I was like, really? You gave me 19 months for something? It's so small and petty. You know, well, what I would say, because, again, I've served time, so I'm pretty familiar with the, you know, the justice system, especially here in Virginia. Right. Just having that that prior, you know, record obviously didn't help you in the case. You uh, mentioned, you, you know, you, you may feel like you got more time than you should have got. And that's that may be true. But you also mentioned that, you know, this time has given you the ability to sit back, reflect, to even help people from the situation that you're currently in. Right. And it definitely has, you know, it, it, it you know, made me realize, like, okay, look, I'm 36 years old. I'm tired. I'm, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of the other, I'm not going to say repeated, but of the, of the similar offense and just seeing other people, like, within my age range, younger than me, hell, even older than me. It's like, wow, I'm in here and I see people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s getting locked up. Their teens getting locked up. It's like, okay, time for me to change what I need to do to prevent myself from being in this type of situation again. So, You know, it's an interesting point that you bring up right there, talking about the old heads in there locked up. That was something that I took heed to during my last incarceration, which was seven years Looking right. at some of these old guys who had been to prison four or five times, I was going for my second time for drug offenses. And I said to myself, I said, you know, I can't keep going like this. I don't want to be like them. So it's interesting to hear you say that you're kind of motivated by that as well. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it baffles me, especially I'm a trustee worker. I work in Brooklyn and just seeing like even the older females like 40s 50s 60s 70s getting locked up for a driving charge it's like really they're con like locking up people random is it baffles my mind it's like okay someone as harmless as a 75 year old woman you know for a dui coming from a family event you know what i'm saying i'm putting her, her information out there but just the what i see on a daily basis and in intake it's just like, okay, wow, are you serious? And it makes me like, like, wow, it's something has to be you no know, done about it. And I could see with the new laws, the change from last year, it was like, okay, they increasing the level of, you know, of the charges for less time, but they're still locking the people for random driving cases and stuff like that. But it, it definitely makes you take a second look at what you've done and how to change it to make it better for yourself when you get out, you know. But it, I, 
it can be a scary thing. You know, you'll see somebody getting locked up for something as simple as driving. You think to yourself, man, you can get locked up for anything. Um, right. But it's just, you know, uh, it's just a part of what comes along with it. And also being in the situation that you're in is going to cause you to think a certain type of way and be fearful. I recently right. just got pulled over uh, two weeks ago. And, you know, I was scared that I was going to get locked back up. It was for speeding. I got a warning, um, but neither here nor there. I hadn't been in trouble in six years. So anytime that you find yourself in a situation, you're going to be fearful. But maybe sometimes it could be a good thing, too, because it always keeps it fresh in your mind. Like, OK, you know, they're going to lock you up for anything. I got to kind of be mindful. Right. Look, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. I want to move around because we've only got 15 minutes here. Um, you're you're a trustee, so you're working in booking. Uh, I've heard about the facility that you're serving time in. Some people have said that it's a really good place to have to serve time at. What are your feelings on that? Um, I I have mixed emotions about it when I first got here. Like, okay, I'm back here at the facility, you know, and just from seeing uh, inside point of view, it has its flaws, especially like with like the cleanliness of it. You know, certain parts of the facility are clean, some certain parts are not. And the positive side about it, my time has definitely flown. I've been here, it'll be 11 months on the 24th of this month. And just being a worker, just being able to see everything from an officer's point of view, I can see both sides from the officer's side and as far as MA side. But I mean, if I have to like, Estimate it all together. I can I say if I had to rate it on the on a one to ten scale, I'll give it like a six and a half, seven all together. Well, that's pretty good in you know in jail standards for sure. I've I've served time at places that are horrendous, uh, but neither here nor there. Uh, let me ask you this as well. This is something that I haven't been asking many people, but I'll ask you. You know, how's the how's the corona in there? You, you guys got outbreaks? Are they taking precautions to keep you guys safe? They've uh, taken precautions. They take it very seriously. Um, majority of the facility is fully vaccinated. Um, we got the uh, Johnson Johnson vaccination back in April of this year, and it's definitely been a been a huge positive asset. You know, especially what's going on. Granted, we got a got this new Delta variant that's out here now, and I stay with the news every day. And I've seen that the positivity rate on the outside, the six percent, is like okay, we're shooting back up. But as far as being here, we're you know taking precautions to everything and just keeping everybody in here safe. Continuing with that uh, line of questioning, right there, you know you've been you've been incarcerated throughout much of the pandemic. You know how was it like to be locked up through that? I'm sure it was pretty scary, right? Um, when the pandemic first happened. March of last year, um, I was in the Heroico waiting on bond. I got out on bond and being outside with everybody during the phase one, phase two, phase three, it was like, wow, this is the now the new norm, man, wearing masks and sanitizing and just trying to stay healthy. Then being inside a facility made it a whole new aspect on it. It's like, okay, when before I got here, they already had one wave of it. Then I'm, I get caught in the second wave. Luckily, I stayed clear of not testing positive for COVID. Uh, of course, you know, stay hydrated with water, juices, stuff like that. And of course, gotta stay clean in here because anything can trigger it. For so, sure. we don't have a lot of time left. I want to and look. I'd like to keep in contact with you. I'll put $20 on your kiosk. Is that where you want the money at? Do you want it on your commissary account? Uh, the uh, tablet would do, yeah. Okay, I'll put it there as soon as we get done with this. Or if I don't do it right then, it'll be this afternoon. You'll have that money up there. But um, you work in booking. So you're a trustee who probably cleans up down there. But in booking, you're seeing everybody who's coming into the jail initially. Tell me some crazy stuff that you've seen down there being a trustee. Uh, from prime example, early this morning, well, actually, I said one like between 1130 last night to 130 this morning, it was one person that came in. It was a DUI 
totally drunk, wasted, and when he's seen the the body scan machine, which it's in most jails now, just you know, just to you know, make sure you have no drugs and no weapons on you. He kind of got freaked out about it and just like from like I everybody likes to have a drink or two, but it's the level of the extent of drinking to the point where you're crazy drunk, mad drunk, you know, and, and he was just talking to himself, cussing everybody out. No, I was like, okay, this dude is really drunk. And it was like, wow, I'm saying this DUI, but most of it been nothing but DUIs, DWIs. Um, it was one instance, this guy came in, he was from New York, driving to North Carolina, came back to the state of Virginia, and he was spazzing out to the point where they had to put him in, as we all know, the turtle suit. And it had to take four or five officers just to put him in the turtle suit, man. It, it's I, I've seen a lot of weird stuff in intake. It's like, dude, are you serious? And it it amazes me. I, I'm just sitting there cleaning the cells, watching TV, and now all of a sudden, oh, we got a crazy person in jail. But most of the people that do come throughout here are DUIs. And when you're in the county of Hanover, town of Ashland, Carolina County, that these are the three counties that has nothing to do. They're bored, so I'm like, hey, let's go put up speeders, DUIs, and you know stuff like that. But it's, I, I, I'm just in awe of everything for real. Well, you know, probably working down there in booking and seeing all of the crazy stuff that takes place down there, it's got to be more entertaining sometimes than watching TV. I imagine. It definitely is. It definitely is. Definitely is. You know, let me ask you this: Are you interested in pen pal support? Would you like me to put people in contact with you? Yeah, sure, definitely. definitely. And and again, because I don't know how much time we have left, I know that one minute ticker will come up at some point. I don't even know if I scheduled this for a half an hour or fifteen minutes. I can't remember what uh, I did. Once it was thirty minutes when I looked at it the other day. Oh well, that's perfect then. If I got thirty minutes to sit here and kick it with you. Yeah, sure. Well, you'll notice I'll bounce around a lot. I try to keep the conversation uh, fresh. What did you think when you see a, a random name pop up on your kiosk requesting a visit from you? I was, uh, I was, I was just going through my uh, my visit. I was like, okay, this is where I said, but just let me accept it to see what it is. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm actually, I'm glad I did accept it because I normally even at home when you get random Instagram or random Facebook messages or uh, requests, I'm like, do I know this person? But I was like, I'll, I, I always give a person a chance, and. I'm glad I did, and you know, we have similar, you know, like you was you did a seven year bid. I, I did a three. I'm doing 15 and a half, 16 months in here now, and it's always cool to interact with people that has gone through the same situation. Absolutely, and there's a lot of people who are watching these videos that I'm creating and who are really rocking with these things, and they're taking so much from different people in different situations. You know, while while it's on my mind, let me ask you, to anybody who's seeing you and seeing this video, what would you say to them about you, your situation, or anything that you know as, you know, maybe a good piece to give to somebody? Um, all I can say is just, you know, if you wind up being in this kind of situation, you know, just make the best of it, take it as, as a learning experience. And whether you learn from it or not, it's entirely up to you. Of course, everybody has to have that, that mindset and the, the heart set on, okay, look, I'm in here. It's time for me to reflect on what I did, reflect on my life and just make a big change when they get released from either jail or prison and just make the best of it because everybody knows Virginia is one of the craziest Commonwealth states, especially for something real petty. But just, you know, do what you got to do to stay out and, you know, just bounce back, get on your feet and strive forward because one wrong move can land a person back in jail just like that. You know, you talk about, uh, you know, some positive things. And 
forgive me, I kind of like lost my train of thought. Where I was going was with what you just mentioned, you know, what do you see for yourself when you get out of here? What's your game plan getting released? Um, I still have my job. Um, I'm going right back to work. I even um, started the ball of having my own business as far as like transporting cargo for like, you know, made to come Best Buy, Walmart, Sam's Club, stuff like that. Um, I did that before I turned myself in on September last year. Of course, going back to church, which I have major support from my church family, of course, my mom, my my wife and everything like that. And it's, you know, definitely huge. And, you know, I've, of course, getting back into bowling, which I'm going to do that slowly, but yet surely, because I've, I've been in three weeks and mainly in Hanover County. And my wife's like, hey, slow down. You're doing way too much. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got under control. On it, it, It's it's harder than it thinks, especially being a musician, playing for two churches, being a, uh, being a bowler, bowling at least, and going out of state for different competitions, running and ripping around like world runners. Like, okay, being in here definitely made me want to slow down and sit. And like, okay, take one step at a time. It's going to be okay. Just plan out your schedule way better than what it is. You know, one thing that stuck with me, um, I think the last time that I was getting out was somebody had said something like, you know, you can't get out here and think that you're just going to make up for lost time because it's when you're ripping and running, you know, that Uh you can end up back in a crazy situation. That's not a guarantee. And, you know, whatever, take it with a grain of salt. But, you know, you take it one day at a time. There's going to be the struggles right. that come along with trying to adjust back out here. Uh, but you've got so much positive support and positive things that you were and you still are a part of that I think, you know, you're going to do really well when you get back out here. Yes, that definitely. And, I mean, one thing I always had instilled in me from my, my mom and my dad, which he passed away 18 years ago, it's like, okay, you got so much going for you, especially from my pastor that I've been knowing now for three years. She sent me a positive message. She was like, okay, this is just temporary. We'll see you soon. And she gave me three scriptures to read. And just having that support from a person that only known you for three years, and but she can see a lot of positive things in you. You know, and that's that's definitely huge. And of course, from my mom, she granted that she's like, okay, this is not you. Way you keep on messing up. Get back out there. Take your time. Do what you got to do. Especially with this pandemic that's is going on, going on almost two years now. And it's like, okay, I know what I have to do. Time to put the plan of action. Stick to it. And just high tail with it, honestly. For sure. Uh, bouncing around, let me ask you this. So on trustee, I, I've met a few different people on trustee in different facilities. Some get mm-hmm. benefits, some get no benefits. I don't know anything about this particular jail that you're locked up at. What kind of perks do you get being a trustee? I mean, without having to pay the $3 a day, which is a big bonus. Um, and just... Uh, Earning four and a half days per month, uh, which is definitely big, especially being a DOC M8. Uh, and I've, you know, of course, yeah, granted the PlayStation 4, that, already, that, that doesn't face me at all. Hold on, hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. It messed me up with that right there. Hold on. What? <laughs> y'all, got a play, y'all got a PlayStation 4 up in there, man. Yeah, we have an RPS4 throughout the whole facility. Yeah. Throughout the whole facility? You don't even got to be on trustee? Mm-hmm. Man, I'll pay yeah. that $3 a day. I'm kidding saying that, but that's crazy, <laughs> man. I, ain't right. know, I, I I don't know any facility in Virginia that had the game systems. Now, I've heard like a little, um, you know, through the grapevine or whatever that there were facilities, but that's wild hearing that. What kind of what kind of games do they get access to in there? I mean, they have, you know, NBA 2K, uh, Madden. Uh, FIFA soccer. No uh, Grand Theft Auto, though, right? No, 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 no. So, no. so it's mostly just sport games and nothing like violent. 
Right. I mean, you know, they've got like a uh, version of Street Fighter, but it's, you know, like characters like, you know, uh, Guru and stuff like that, you know, from like, you know, like from the old Street Fighter games, uh, wrestling. But I've played a couple times. I'm like, okay, they got PlayStation 4, cool. But it's based on how well the cleanliness of the units are because we have command inspection every week. And it's just to keep the cleanliness of the facility. And let me because, say something. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off right there. You got me hyped on this, though. What they're doing there, if other places did the same thing, you might have less problems and a more clean facility because that's a lot of incentive for a guy to keep keep things going the right way, you know, having access to that game system. It is. It is. And, I mean, granted, I, I don't really play it because – I have game systems at home, and of course, for my kids, they, they play it as well. But in here, I'm mostly focused on like, okay, I'm earning good time, mainly the four and a half days per month, which is a bonus because this definitely helped shorten my time, especially for being DOC, so I can get back on my family. And you know, that's interesting you mentioned DOC because standard uh, initial good time earning in DOC is only 3.5 days a month, isn't isn't that right? Uh, it's 2.25 days up to four and a half. It's up to their discretion. Okay. Uh, but I'm glad that you clarified that right there, but you're getting this extra good time being on trustee, which gets you home mm -hmm. faster. And... Uh, they're charging three dollars a day standard in the jail to pay to stay, which adds up pretty quickly. And as a trustee, you don't have to pay that. Right, and doing this for nine months, <laughs> you can imagine how much that would have cost almost nine hundred bucks. And as you say, in, in nine months. And granted, you know, I don't have to pay for medical, um, you know, sick call and medical uh, fees and stuff like that, which is also a good thing too. So, I mean, it sounds like a pretty okay spot. If you got to do some time, that's not a bad spot to be at. Uh, quick question about the three dollars a day. Uh, I served time in Western Tidewater Regional Jail. That's in Suffolk. Okay. Before I went up right. the road, they did right. three dollars a day there. They were taking it just like that. If you got any money sent in, and they would leave you five dollars. How does your jail operate in terms of? Are they taking the money first from any money that you get sent in? Um. So what? they do is let's just say you owe 150 160 bucks and your family put money on your books there was split the difference 50 50 so 50 percent will go to the jail 50 percent will go to your uh commissary account and even though that's not great that's still better than the way that suffolk was doing it i don't know if they've changed that but i've heard it's just different from you know facility to facility how they actually get that money yeah, uh, it's, I know, the only thing is, like, because Keefe Commissary and GTO, which is two independent contractors, if you owe anything to Keefe Commissary for, like, energy kits or tablet, let's just say your tablet gets broken, that's automatically 100%. That's crazy. Um, and forgive me, I got a camera right here that I had to hit record on. Too. Yeah. It had just stopped. What are they charging for the indigent kits? Uh, it's eight dollars and twenty cents. You know, for um, the next one, sports bar. So you know, ten stamp envelopes, writing pad, stuff like that. Well, and that, excuse me, I'm sorry. That's not bad considering that the indigent kits that I've seen. You know, they're going to have the Lisa soap or, you know, the Bob Barker. At least they're giving you guys real soap. Right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I know that I know now it's almost about to be 30 minutes. Look, as we get ready to wrap this up, I want to I, I want to just, just mainline the nail. Just taking it to, to function. Can you hear me? Yeah. OK. Um, as we get ready to wrap this up, I just want to say, you know, Eric, I come at you as a complete random stranger, but I thank you for your willingness to share about, you know, your your situation and also what your time is like. Definitely, definitely. And I'm looking forward to keeping in contact with you and, you know, other pen pals, you know, on down the road and just, you know, keep on going from here. And I would definitely be keeping in contact with you as well. 
Well, I'll go ahead and wrap it up on that note right there, Eric. Again, thank you so much for taking the time. I'm going to put that money on your kiosk uh, momentarily. Send me a message, and maybe we can reconvene sometime in the future. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Hey, look, man, hold your head up in there. I, I hope these final three months you got fly by and uh, get back out here and start, you know, getting back on the positive track. All right, man. It's, it's nice chatting with you and definitely being on your YouTube channel. And I'm definitely be looking forward to, you know, speaking with you more in here, and especially right, it's more in book. once I touch down as well. It's called After Prison Show. If you ask anybody in there, some people may know because it at one point used to be a really large channel. But definitely uh, send me a message and let's keep in contact. All right, man. All right. It's nice talking to you, Joe. Oh, yeah. Nice talking to you as well. Take care, man. All right, you too. All right. Bye-bye. Well, I got to be honest, I feel like that went exceptionally well. Man, shout out to Eric. Eric sounds like a really level-headed guy in there. He's only got a couple of months left. He's got a lot of positive stuff going for himself, especially when he gets out. And I wish that guy nothing but success. You know, it's awesome that somebody who doesn't know me at all is willing to take the opportunity to speak with me and, and all of us and share a little bit of their experience. And as always, just like with anybody else, if anybody would like to contact Eric, possibly be a pen pal to this guy, definitely send me an email and I'll make sure that you're able to get in contact with them. Talk with you guys again real soon.